I used to have horribly crippling dreams about playing subpar games for YouTube. Thank God that's over with, because I am the Game Collector and this is Second Opinion Games, and today I do the review of... Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas. Oogie's Revenge. For the original Xbox. Second Opinion Games. The Nightmare Before Christmas, Oogie's Revenge, is the sequel to the movie The Nightmare Before Christmas. So if you want to know what happened in Halloween Town after the credits rolled, well, this is the game for you. It was made by Buena Vista Games, a game company known for some pretty much garbage stuff like the Spy Kids Collection, Chicken Little, Kim Possible's Communicator for the DS, and the Chronicle of Nardia's video game series, so they really don't have a good reputation. When you boot up the game, you see the Capcom logo, but I struggle to see what Capcom actually did for this game. Also on GameFAQs.com, it says that it's a survival game, which is kind of unusual. I mean, you could say every game's a survival game, like Mario Brothers. You run to the right and try to live. Survival game. And, yeah, I think it's mislabeled. So Lock, Stock, and Barrel have resurrected Oogie, who captured then all of the representatives of the Seven Holidays and is holding them hostage or something. And he also collected the doors to the trees that they go into. And that's really all I care to know. If you really know the movie up and down, well then you will recognize every single character throughout this game. And there are plenty of them, and they pretty much all return with their appropriate voices, including the main character, Jack Skellington. So thank goodness that is all there and complete. The controls are sort of good. It plays pretty much like Ragar. Nowadays, people would just call this a God of War clone without the jump you have a simple dodge button, which the Pumpkin King dodges his own special way. Your main weapon here is the Soul Grabber, which acts very similar to the Chains of Olympus. Now they do start off kind of weak at first, but later you could upgrade them to do more damaging attacks and bigger combos. Also, you are the Pumpkin King, so you could blow fire out of your face. And that will open up different paths along the way. And eventually you could even turn into a creepy version of Santa Claus where you can leave presents and stop people in their tracks. I don't really use this very much throughout the game. Very, very sparingly. Most of the time you do spend with that soul grabber weapon. And it's also a tool for navigating your way through the levels. Instead of having a jump button, you just might see a certain area shine, throw your soul grabber up, and you could swing across to other areas or to climb new heights. This is crucial for working your way through the game, and I'm thankful that they did this instead of having precision jumps because the controls feel a little funny. If you're running up a twisting corridor, well, if you're even pushing a little bit up at an angle in just the right way, suddenly you stop all your forward momentum and just freeze in your tracks. And it's super annoying, which is just a lot of this game. Little tiny nitpicks that add up to something bigger. The Metacritic score on this game is a 75, and I'm pretty sure this was one of the big reasons for this. It certainly wasn't the music that really pushed people away from this game. If you're a fan of the music of the film, well then, all of it pretty much returns but modified. They kept the background beats all the same, but tend to change a lot of the words. Every time a group of enemies shows up, you'll hear the this is Halloween, and it never gets old. What does get old is when your main character says Soul Grabber every freaking time he uses it. Again, little tiny nitpicks to ruin something that should be a total masterpiece. The level design is kind of interesting. Some levels are pretty straightforward, and others are just fetch quests for people of Halloween Town that can't seem to do anything for themselves. And this is another thing that really drags down the game. 
I really like doing things right, that progress the thing. story along, but please That's don't right. make the fetch quests Let's last up to a half hour. Keeping the levels short to right around the 10-12 minute range would have been perfect That's for this right. game Let's that's 24 eight. levels long. Now the first time I played through it, it only took me about 8 hours, but some of these missions I spent a half hour to 45 minutes on, and I really could have done without those. And one of the reasons for the extreme length of the levels is actually a pretty horrible one. See, in most games with a main hub, after you complete a level, you'll start back at that hub. Not in Nightmare Before Christmas. No, if you work your way through a huge level, well, you know what, then you have to run back through the entire empty level that you just cleared to make it back to the main hub to start the next mission. And how do you know where the next mission is? Well, luckily, if you press the back button, you can see a map, which then instructs you to exactly know where to go next. Thank God they did this, otherwise I would have been lost and this game would have been total crap. However, how it is now, I'm just hitting the back button, non-freaking stop, and totally relying on this map to know exactly where to go. Which, later in the game, when you enter a forest level, and the map is completely useless to you because it's a big maze, well, that just gets super frustrating. Probably why it took me, like, 45 minutes to beat this level. And this really grinds on you, making you wonder if you should really even keep playing this game, and it just feels like a total waste of time. Now the graphics in this game really hold up because the levels feel alive with brilliant art design. Whether it's the cemetery, or the main hub, or even the village, or this area that shows off heat and booby traps really, really well. And of course, I love the looks of that forest level towards the end of the game. It's just a shame that the whole thing's a maze and just ruins it for me because I think that this is pure art. Eventually you will make it to Christmas Town, which also looks pretty festive, and I think that's one of the big drawbacks of this game. I would have liked to experience, you know, Thanksgiving Town and see the chickens and turkeys run around all crazy while people are cutting off their heads. That could have been hilarious, but unfortunately most of the game is in Halloween Town. And I think that's what people more or less expected. I just wish they would have done a little bit more with it and thought a little more outside the box. If you happen to beat a level without taking very much damage and have a decent combo and beat it in a rather quick time, well, chances are you're going to unlock some figurines in the game and some different costumes, which don't really change the way the game's played at all. It just artificially adds to the length of the game, which also it seems kind of weird that it encourages you to run through it as fast as possible because at this point I noticed that most of the enemies of the game I could just run by, just completely circumventing them in general. And that's what I did most commonly. Rather than fight enemies, I just continuously run by them because I don't want to risk taking hits, which then decreases my score. Also, taking the time to beat them doesn't help my score either, so I'm just literally running through the motions of the game. Boss battles usually go down two different ways. One, you can hack them down with your soul grabber, and the other way is by collecting musical notes, which if you have enough of them, you'll enter a quick time music event, where by singing the songs, you could do massive amounts of damage to the boss. However, I am just horrible at these and can't seem to do them whatsoever. Later on in the game, there's these giants. One's an ice giant and one's a fire giant. And of course, you have to use your different suits and all the knowledge you've gained up to that point to take them down really fast. I beat this level in two minutes the very first time I tried it. Eventually, you will get to the very end of the game, where then you have to get pretty creative to take down a now giant Oogie. And I absolutely love this part. However, because this game likes to ruin good things at the very, very end of the game. It is a quick time event musical, which I can't do at all. If you make a couple little mistakes, you just die. 
game over and try and start all the way back at that cool scene with a giant oogie and work your way to the musical again and then quickly die again and again and again. I cannot get the hang of these quick time events and this absolutely kills me because now I am never going to be able to finish this game because up until this point they don't make it mandatory that you know how to do this and then now at the end of the game they do and it completely ruins it. Oh my god, I hope if you decide to pick up this game, you better be freaking good at these quick time events. Otherwise, you know what, just forget. Now I normally don't like to beat up on video games I'm reviewing too much, but for everything that I love about this game, there's something else that I hate. The music is fantastic, but I hate hearing the word soul grabber every single time I use my weapon or try to swing across a ledge. Also, the fact that it grades you on how fast you beat a level makes you rush through the world, but it also rewards you to fully explore it kind of contradicts each other. It makes you want to play through every level more than once, and certain maze levels, you really just don't feel like doing that. The controls are somewhat good, but if you're making the tiniest turn, all of a sudden you stop. And for every boss that I find that is terrific and fun to fight, there's another one that's just totally boring. Some levels can just be ran through really fast and it really gets my heart pumping, and then other ones are just fetch quests that go on and on. Now, Tim Burton's Nightmare Before Christmas, Oogie's Revenge, could be a hidden gem to many of you out there. But I'm pretty sure for most of you, just don't even bother. But that's my opinion. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Believe it or not, I had a pretty good time making it, and I think I'm going to be doing these reviews for many years to come. Next year, I have lots more top 10s on the docket, along with reaching out to other video game consoles, might even get my CDI up and running, and we'll see some real magic then. So make sure you guys leave me comments, because every day I go without hearing from someone, I die a little inside. And I'm a very lonely person, so just leave me a comment. I'll be happy to respond to you. So until later, I'll see you again, guys.